Tonight, dramatic new details in FBI files about a wild and deadly day in Cleveland. It was 50 years ago this Monday when 10 were killed, more than 15 wounded in a confrontation with black power groups. It's called the Glenville Shootout. The investigator Tom Myers says declassified records reveal what really happened that day and why. I think that July 23rd, 1968 is one of the most infamous days in the city of Cleveland's history. 1968, J. Edgar Hoover's counterintelligence program, COINTELPRO, targeted black nationalists as a hate group. Look at the FBI and COINTELPRO and J. Edgar Hoover. They actually conducted war against the black citizens. We examined dozens of declassified FBI documents. According to one agency memo, COINTELPRO was set up to prevent the coalition of militant black nationalist groups and prevent these militants from gaining respectability. When the FBI wrote these files, they never expected that anyone would see them or see the light of day. What used to be secret FBI documents are now for anyone to see. They're included in a book by Cleveland lawyer and author Jim Robinault. FBI files identified a number of black militants, including former Cleveland school teacher Don Freeman. COINTELPRO actually said he was a threat to national security. If the police abuse you, you have not only the, the right, but the responsibility of defending yourself. That was also the philosophy of Fred Ahmed Evans, a leader of a black militant group in Cleveland's Glenville neighborhood. Evans received thousands of dollars from a taxpayer-funded program to fight poverty called Cleveland Now. Instead of using the money to help those in need, he bought high-powered rifles and ammunition. There was an absolute purpose to ambush the police and kill as many as they could. With the help of FBI informants, Cleveland police were tipped off about the weapons. So they watched Evans closely, setting up surveillance in this area about a block from Evans' apartment, which is now gone. It was pretty ridiculous. You got these white guys in unmarked police cars. I mean, it was a joke. And every 90% of the neighborhood's black, and you got these white guys in his car. And one call, uh, Evans feared they were about to be attacked by police. About 15 armed militants burst from Evans' home. The stakeout cars made clean getaways, but minutes later, a city tow truck arrived at this location to remove an abandoned vehicle. The truck, with flashing lights and the words Cleveland Police Department marked on the side, was shot at along with its operators who were wearing similar uniforms as cops. Somebody started shooting at me with a shotgun. They hit me twice in the back and I started running and they hit me again. Suddenly, all hell broke loose. It seemed like they surrounded us. They were shooting at us from both sides with shotguns. They were coming from everywhere. I never seen so many guns in my life. This was as chaotic as chaotic can be. Former patrolman Leonard Sims was one of many officers who responded. At least 30 gunshots struck his car. It started over something that didn't make sense. They know they couldn't overthrow the police department. They but decided they could. When Jerry Viola and his partner arrived, they also came under heavy fire. I could see tracers going by the front windshield and you could hear automatic weapon fire. Rookie cop Pete Ventura was in the thick of it, shooting it out with black militants, storming Evans' home, and rescuing wounded officers. The hour-long gun battle resulted in 10 killed, including three police officers and 15 wounded. Ventura was the first to make contact with Evans when he surrendered. You, you wait honky you, he says, if my gun went to jam, he says, I'd, I'd have killed you, more of you. The gun battle triggered the city's second riot in only two years. The Glenville neighborhood was set on fire. Firefighters were shot at while trying to do their job. Carl Stokes, the country's first black big city mayor, called in the National Guard. 34 buildings and 63 businesses destroyed in two days. $18 million in damage in today's dollars. And yet, some militants tried to justify the rioting. And looting and burning will continue as long as the white merchants are in the community exploiting the black community. Stokes took a lot of heat for ordering all white cops to stay out of the riot area. But Robinall said it was a smart move. I think it saved a lot of lives because I think there were a lot of people in high retribution mode. They've been attacked, ambushed. Ahmed Evans was convicted of murder and sentenced to death. He was in prison for nine years when he died of cancer. 
Racism and poverty triggered the shootout. So what's changed in 50 years? Part three, tomorrow night. I'm the investigator, Tom Meyer.